ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Them Nerds. Today is Thursday. That means it's Throwback Thursday. And in case you can't tell by my uh, lovely assistant here behind me, uh, today we are taking on the classic film, Ghostbusters. Now, we started off Throwback Thursday with some really big stinkers, uh, but we've hit some pretty good ones lately. Uh, Ghost Rider was kind of the man, then we went Blade, right? Blade was good. Jurassic Park was good. We've had some good ones. This one might be the best one. I mean, it's, it's, it's slowly, I mean, just a little smidge better than Power of the Duck. Just a bit. <laughs> just a bit. Too bad these guys didn't catch, uh, you know, extra dimensional waterfowl. They could have grabbed his corkscrew penis self and taken him back to his own dimension. <laughs> anyway. How long did we go before a penis mention? I don't think it was 20 seconds, maybe. Sorry, guys. All right. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Classic film. What a cast, which we'll get into in a minute. But 1984 film directed by Ivan Reitman, written by uh, two of the stars, actually. Um, written by uh, Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, uh, who played, Dan Aykroyd played uh, Ray Stance, and uh, Harold Ramis played Egon Spangler, which is one of the epic names in all of sci-fi, <laughs> Egon. Uh, and of course, uh, rounding out the main three uh, cast, Bill Murray, uh, who was in full Bill Murray form in this movie, uh, one of my favorite parts of it. He played Peter Venkman. Um, we also, of course, had Sigourney Weaver uh, playing uh, Dana, uh, Rick Moranis, who played Lewis, and uh, Ernie Hudson, who uh, joined the, the, the group later, uh, played Winston uh, Zeddemore. When I was a kid, I always thought Winston was one of the main, like, he was there the whole time, because my parents wouldn't let me watch this movie, along with many other movies. And so my first exposure to Ghostbusters was the cartoon. So I just assumed Winston was, like, around the whole time. Yeah, I... I didn't realize he came in so late in the movie but uh i mean there's also was like three more movies after that so yeah he got your time right right uh yeah he when i remember the first time i watched this movie like the actual you know movie not the cartoon uh there was no winston at the beginning i was like where's winston see i had the action figure i knew he was there he should have been there anyway um the uh the cast top to bottom was just super good like, especially, I mean, when you look at an 80s film, this is really an all-star kind of cast. Oh, yeah. These are the people at the, you know, pinnacle of their careers. Right. And, you know, uh, I, I was, when I was doing a little bit of research uh, for, for this show, uh, I, re I found out, and this would have been equally cool, the person that was originally approached to play uh, Lewis was John Candy instead of Rick Moranis. Oh, wow. That would have been great. Yeah, that would have uh, been he apparently talked to the director and had his vision for the character was a guy with a thick German accent and a, a pack of German shepherds that followed him around. He wanted to be like a stereotypical, like German, like wearing lederhosen and everything. So John Candy, the only reason uh, Ivan Reitman, the director, the reason that he turned down John Candy's approach was only because Zool was already like a dog. And so he didn't want a guy with a bunch of dogs. That's the reason why he turned it down. <laughs> yeah, he's like, ah, oh, you know, you almost have me, but. Uh... Ooh, you know, the lederhosen are cool, but not, not the dogs. Sorry. And then Sigourney Weaver's role, uh, Dana, was originally pitched to Julia Roberts. Oh. Yeah, and uh, she was kind of, it, it was kind of a 50-50 thing until uh, Sigourney Weaver, I guess, dusted off uh, some, some comedic chops in some of the audition process. And it was her idea to be possessed by Zool. She got down in, on, on, all, on her hands and feet and walked like a dog in the audition process. And that's what got her the job. Right behind John Candy. Yeah, <laughs> right. She, she wanted to be a German Shepherd. It's weird. <laughs> that's the weirdest uh, casting story I've ever heard that doesn't include a black leather couch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, <laughs> no. Uh. <laughs> so tell me about it. What what happened in this movie? Uh, so basically, what it revolves around is uh, three university teachers who uh, get fired after uh, you know 
going to a library trying to catch a ghost that's currently behind Tony. Uh, and uh, they decide to open up their own ghost busting uh, company out of an old firehouse, which I mean, really, at the end of the day, that probably revitalized the idea of people living in firehouses because uh, I wanted to. Yeah. And so uh, from there, they, you know, go on this spree of just capturing ghosts. And uh, Bill Murray uses that as a way to capture beautiful women's hearts. And uh, Sigourney Weaver, you know, blows off just miraculously her TV turns on because her apartment happens to be possessed. And uh, there's a Ghostbuster commercial and she doesn't take it seriously until she opens up her uh, fridge to find a hell dimension inside of it. And uh, goes running out and, you know, Rick Moranis is on, or it lives on their floor. I mean, that which is right there is great. Which I thought was funny is like every time he leaves his apartment, he's always locked out. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't. <laughs> well, and then, uh, especially uh, since he was, wasn't, wasn't the little like subtitle for him, like, the the keep like the gatekeeper or like yeah he was the key the key keepers he hold a key master or something yeah, yeah yeah right so he gets locked out all the time and then he's supposed to be like the key you know that was great yeah so he, she go, they go down to uh she goes to the Ghostbusters firehouse and tries to convince them that she actually saw this hell dimension and uh, gives them the information they find out that what she's describing is you know factually there is this you know connection that could possibly be true but when bill murray goes down he doesn't find anything there in, uh inside the apartment um until a couple days later when she goes back and she's sucked into her refrigerator and turned into uh i don't know what her character's name was she wasn't zool i know that i, I don't know was just she the gatekeeper or the keykeeper? No. something whatever so scorning we were she wasn't playing ripley i know that and um so uh she is you know possessed and like Basically, um, if you've ever watched any X-Men movie, she would be the uh, Dark Phoenix equivalent because she's just, you know, extremely seductive, trying to be her at least. And they start fighting these ghosts and demons trying to get Sigourney Weaver back and the building blows up into a big portal and all the punk rocker people in uh, New York decide to stand underneath the building that's falling down on top of them. And I, I think that if, if I would have actually gone to New York, uh, like ever, but especially like in the 80s, I think I would have been disappointed at the lack of leather clad mohawk sporting people just standing in the streets because every movie about New York led me to believe that that's what New York looks like. There's well, like, I, Oh yeah. New York looked like that until uh, a, a, also another similar ghoul became in charge. His name was uh, Rudy Giuliani. Right. Yes. <laughs> Reminds me. Of, got to tuck <laughs> in my shirt. I think his name was also Zool. Got to tuck in my shirt real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, they're all down there and they're fighting and they shoot their echoplasm guns at, <laughs> at Zool, who's flipping around like Circus Soleil. I think you downloaded the wrong movie again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're flipping all around. Uh, and uh, the one thing they're not supposed to do is think about anything that can kill them and uh, Dan Aykroyd ends up thinking of uh, the Marshmallow Man. The, the Stay Michelin. Puffed Marshmallow yeah. Man. And here he comes and cue the marshmallow fluff falling all over everybody. Yeah. Which I mean isn't really the worst way to go out, I'm guessing, especially in New York. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, um, the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man is an underrated uh, kaiju. You know, I love all the old like kaiju movies, you know, Mothra and Godzilla and King Kong. Uh, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man does a lot of damage. Yeah. One of those underrated kaiju. You know, the one thing about, I, I mentioned my parents wouldn't let me watch this movie. Uh, and so for me, the animated series was like my first introduction to these characters. I was really disappointed when I watched the movie the first time when I was younger and I saw Slimer and I was like, oh, it's Slimer. And then he's just like gone. Yeah. Like and he's not funny or and he's not nice. Right. He's, he's like a he's just like a little like blinking you miss a character. Yeah. Watching the cartoon, I mean I had like all these slimer toys and it was like, you know, this huge part of it for me. And then to watch it, it's like, oh, that's mm, whatever. And well, that's when you look at the merchandising, like Stay Puff Marshmallow Man and Slimer were like the two big like merchandising pieces. And then when you watch the movie, it's like between the two of them, what did they get? A total of 15 minutes screen time tops. 
I would even think that it, I don't think that 10 maybe. Time. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. There was a lot of marshmallow fluff and ectoplasm being like shot around. Everywhere. everywhere. Sounds like, yeah. This <laughs> sounds like a good time. But, uh, you know, uh, overall, that movie still stands up. Right. It's, it, there's a lot of movies that we have, you know, rewatched uh, from the 80s where the dialogue and the humor, they just are cheesy. They smack of like that old 80s, like heavy handed, cheesy comedy. And uh, there was a little bit of that in here, but for the most part, I thought it was kind of, it, it, the, the comedy was subtle and it kind of held up. Um, I was like, I caught myself like kind of, you know, when I was watching Howard the Duck the first time, you know, when we did Howard the Duck a month ago or whatever, I caught myself watching it like this the whole time. Oh, see, like, I felt right. like it was like, uh, I was watching it like it was like a master class. <laughs> well, when I was watching this, I, I especially when, uh, when, when Bill Murray was doing the, the psychic test with the, yeah. the guy and then the, the pretty girl, yeah. uh, I, I caught myself like, like legitimately thinking it was funny. Yeah. And, and for a lot of these older movies, it's like, oh, haha, knee slapper. Yeah, that's that's a good one there. But it was it was great. I, oh, Bill, Rick Bill Murray is just I thought he, Rick Moranis in the movie. I thought was funny. They took the best parts of like movies like Caddyshack and stuff like that, and moved it into a movie where it's more you know on this whole supernatural kind of idea, but still kept the funny while right. keeping it. Um, so it doesn't really age. You know, it ages by decor inside of a house or by you know rock punk people on the street but like uh the story itself itself still stands up right this, this movie to me and they're not they're not similar but uh i, I always, when i think of this movie i think of zombie land and the, the reason why is because both of those movies take the best parts of different genres and kind of mix them together and it makes for this really unique film and, and ghostbusters had you know it, it mixed comedy action sci-fi and I mean, maybe even a little bit of romance in there, right? Um, and it, it kind of all mixed them together and, and it, it produced this thing that, you know, like we're talking about, still holds up. It was from, you know, made in 1984 and we're sitting here, what, 36 years later? I don't know, math. A lot of years later. 35 um, years. 35-ish, whatever. Uh, math leads helps out in the comments. Um, 84, 2004. No, 2024 would be 40 years, minus four, 36 years. Yes. Yeah. Never mind math. Depends on what month, it depends on what month it came out. Yeah. Mathletes stand down <laughs> and stand by. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But I do think that, uh, you know, it, it also spun off a lot of sequels to it. And like, uh, I, I think that even the sequels of Ghostbuster itself, are not that bad. I personally thought the one that they just did not that long ago with the female cast wasn't horrible either. Um, but if you look back at a movie that was made in 1984 and you're looking at like the special effects they used for the ghost, it actually is pretty good. It wasn't terrible. I mean, given, given the constraints and, and what they were trying to do, uh, it was good for the time. The only, the only time I ever caught myself looking at the special effects and going, Oh, come on. Was the, uh, when she opened up the refrigerator and the, and the, the whole like, Oh yeah, or the hell the dog was in there. The dog scenes weren't the most. It was very claymation. Yeah, that that's anytime you saw the the like hell hounds or whatever. That, that's yeah. yeah. I was like, mm. but like Slimer looked cool. The the little like ectoplasm. Yeah, because like it's supposed to be scary when she opens up the fridge, but it, it does look like a meatloaf uh, video. It reminds yeah. the singer, not not a <laughs> not a, That's not my next dinner. ASMR video. <laughs> meatloaf, meatloaf, just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it reminded me of like something you would see from the Muppets. Yes. Where like, you know, it's the live action and then you have like the actual puppets or whatever. And then like, all of a sudden there's like some weird claymation situation going on. You're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't even look right. But the, you know, the other stuff looked cool. Um, the, the one, there's two things that I was watching. I, I wrote down a couple of like, just random thoughts as I was watching this. One of them is, that the I used to collect Hot Wheels and like die cast cars a lot, right? So one of my very favorite ones to collect was Ecto One from Ghostbusters. It's a 1959 Cadillac, uh, and it's just gorgeous. It, it, 
the way that looks in the movie is like iconic, obviously, but it's just one of my favorite cars. I love it so much. Um, and it's one of those things like the, it's like the mystery machine from Scooby-Doo. It just, or, or like the, um, the car from uh, Supernatural. It's one of those cars where you see it and it's like, that is that car. And that yeah. was one of those things that, that popped out to me, that and the, the fire station. Like when I think of Ghostbusters, beyond, you know, the people that are in it and the ghosts and that kind of stuff, yeah. that's what I think of. That firehouse, the car. The other thing I wrote down was, Reginald Vell Johnson is a cop in everything. It makes me wonder if, if Ghostbusters takes place in the, uh, the Family Matters universe. <laughs> it's the it's the tgif cinematic universe well i also thought like um the old woman that's in the very beginning that's putting away the, the library books i yeah. don't know what the actress's name is but i was i thought to myself like how long has she been old right because i've never seen her in a movie where she was not old right she she was like she was an old lady in like fairly recent films and then yeah. watched this movie from with 36 years ago we just figured yeah. out and she was already old yeah i think she was a ghost from that show that movie. Maybe. Maybe she's she slimer. Was. She's slimer. <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right. So overall, I would say that I'm going to give this a, a big positive. I don't, we, we don't have a rating system. I was going to give it two thumbs up like we're Siskel and Ebert, but then like other movies we give like stars. I don't know. I would just say it's good. It holds up. It watching it made me want to just like kind of keep it in rotation. Like I want to go back and watch it again, you know, before too long. I think it's been, you know, 20 years since I watched it the last time. So oh, yeah. I, I, I don't want to wait that long. Yeah. I, I would watch, if it was on TV right now, I'd watch it again, even though yeah. I just watched it. And uh, I also like, I think, you know, when you, when you look at a movie that was made in 1984 off a 30, $25 million budget that made almost $300 million, you, I mean, that movie's going to stand up. And I'd get it, you know, on around the world and back again, snap. Is that our rating system? <laughs> yes, we're the guys from the living color. Are we those guys? Yep. <laughs> oh boy. I'm going to have to go to wardrobe. <laughs> I'm not dressed for that occasion. All right. So I think that'll do it for us here on Throwback Thursday. <laughs> How are the duck is ate it. Ate it. Ate it. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Thank you guys for joining us for this, our last uh, Throwback Thursday during the month of October. Uh, please go back and watch our other Throwback Thursdays for all of our other spooky reviews. We uh, talked about Ghost Rider. We talked about Blade. We talked about Interview with the Vampire. With the vampire. Um, what else do you want to see? What do you want to see us review and talk about and go back and subject ourselves to? Um, there is one, I, I haven't talked to, to Jerry about this, uh, off camera yet, but, uh, evil dead is on Netflix. We should totally do evil dead next week. It's a good one. Yeah, that's no, that's in November though. Shouldn't we be watching like movies about Thanksgiving? I don't, I can't think of any classic Turkey based films. So we'll, we'll have to talk about that one. Oh no. <laughs> uh, all right. Don't forget to follow us on social media at We Them Nerds on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, please, 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 uh, when you see our posts on Facebook, comment on them. I love uh, interacting in the comments on Facebook. Uh, check out Instagram. Jerry does this super cool spotlight. Uh, if you tune in now, you get to see the word boner used a bunch of times. Uh, because he's doing a character spotlight on the Joker and there's a really great uh, panel that he found all about Joker. Yeah, we had to go and actually Google to figure out what that meant in 1940. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently in the 1940s, a boner was a big goof. Which makes sense because, you know, if you ever watched Growing, Growing Pains, uh, Mike Seaver's best friend's name was Boner. <laughs> Dude, when that show came on and they, that character came on for the first time, my dad heard them say something about boner. <laughs> he was like, what are we watching? <laughs> All right, but, guys. Anyways. <laughs> anyway, this, this is the kind of stuff we usually talk about after we turn the camera off. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you.
please continue to like, share, and subscribe. Continue to uh, to interact with us on social media. Uh, we we love you guys. Be good. Be good to each other. Bye. <laughs>